Hey guys, this is James Wilson with MTV Strength Training Systems at BikeJames.com and today I'm going to go over the Turkish Get Up. Uh, the Turkish Get Up is one of my favorite exercises. You can use a kettlebell or a dumbbell. You can even use an Olympic bar uh, once you get strong enough on this exercise. Um, what I'm going to do is break it down for you, show you how to do it. There's seven steps to doing a good Turkish Get Up. And then after I'm done with that, I'm going to go through some of the steps and explain how do these things relate to uh, riding, you know, why as a mountain biker do you want to be incorporating this exercise? How does it relate to what you do on the trail? So, anyways, uh, breaking down how you do this, uh, we want to make sure that you get set up right. So, I'm going to show you how to get set up, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. When you get set up, you want to start by laying down flat on the ground, get your shoulders tucked up underneath you. You're going to take your kettlebell or your dumbbell in one hand. You're going to press it up out away from you. Then you're going to bring the foot on that side up, out to the side a little bit, and pull the heel in close to the butt. So you can see if you're looking at me from straight on, you can see my leg's not straight in. It's kind of out to the side a little bit, and the heel's in close to the butt. So this is the setup. You want to make sure that you're set up right, or else you're not going to have a good rep. So once you've gotten set up, the seven steps are, step one, get up onto your elbow. So roll over onto your elbow. Step two, get up on your hand. When you get up on your hand, you want to try to put your hand where your elbow was. Step three, elevate your hips off of the ground. Step four, pull your knee into your chest. Step five, roll the knee underneath you. You want to put it on the ground underneath the shoulder that's up above. So in this case, I've got my right shoulder up. So I want this underneath my right shoulder. Step six, elevate your torso so that you're upright. Step seven, stand up. So that's how you do, get up, and then coming back down, take a big step back, come down on your knee. You're gonna come down on your hand, try and get your hand underneath your shoulder. So in this case, I'm trying to get underneath my right shoulder. You're going to pull the knee off of the ground and bring it into your chest. Extend the leg, lower the hips, come down to your elbow, and roll back down onto your back. So that is it right there. So show you once more, kind of a little more full speed. Elbow, hand, elevate, pull, roll, up, stand up. Step back. Hand down, knee in, leg out, elbow, roll down. So that is how you do a Turkish get up. Like I said, as long as you're just following those steps, it's, it's a lot easier than it looks, but it's very difficult to master. There's a lot of little subtleties in each of those steps that goes into really having a good, strong Turkish get up. I think that this, is, this exercise will give you a really good idea of how strong you really are because we're not looking at just one particular movement we're looking at seven different movements that go into this exercise so if you have any sort of weakness in the core or the hips or the shoulders it's going to get exposed through this exercise also if you have a left right asymmetry it's going to get exposed through this exercise so that's what makes it uh, such a great overall exercise now as mountain bikers, there's a couple things that this does for us. Core strength is extremely important. The Turkish getup, the whole act of the getup, is taking your core from a lying position through the steps up to a standing position. And through that, your core is having to stabilize in a lot of different ways and a lot of different planes, which is a lot like what we have to do on our mountain bike. So when we're doing exercises like planks and side planks, they're good for our core, but they're not dynamic, they're not, uh, they're not a movement-based exercise, and they're also only teaching the core to stabilize in, in one way, which again isn't bad when you incorporate those, but the get-up has the core, uh, your body's moving, it's having to stabilize during movement, and it's having to stabilize in a lot of different ways. So that core strength is extremely important for us. This is also going to help with our cornering stuff. This step here, where you are here, where you're pulling the knee up under and pulling it here. From this step here, this movement, you see how my hips are, are, are creating this movement. So you want to slide the hips under you in order to bring yourself up right. 
And then when you're reversing the motion, you're coming back down, you want to make sure that you're not like falling out away from yourself, that you're pushing the hips out to the side and lowering the hand down to the ground. And so this hip movement right here, this lateral hip movement, especially in this kneeling split position, is very specific to what you need to have happening on your bike in order to counterbalance your lean or the lean of your bike. Turning your bike and cornering is all about leaning the bike and then counterbalancing the lean with your hips versus turning the handlebars or leaning your body. So that hip mobility and that ability to get the hips moving side to side and the lateral core strength that you need for that are extremely important. And then finally, just good old pedaling strength as well. Just the lunge up out of this position here is a really good unilateral leg exercise. So overall, with one exercise, we're getting a lot of good core strength. We're getting um, some lateral hip mobility and strength that we need for cornering. We're getting some unilateral leg strength that we need for pedaling. And just the whole movement uh, forces you to stabilize your shoulder and keep it nice and strong and take it through a full range of motion um, as well. So again, just rep for rep, there's few exercises that can deliver everything that this exercise does for us. So extremely important for you to incorporate into your routine. You know, a couple sets of three to five reps a few times a week is all it's going to take in order to, uh, to get good at this exercise and get strong on it and start seeing the benefits and stuff like that. So it uh, makes it a really good in-season uh, exercise option for us because you know when you're out riding a lot and you have very limited time in the gym and to train you want to make sure that you're as efficient as possible with your exercises so that's why this is one of my favorite exercises when I'm riding a lot so I can bang out a couple sets of these and I know that I've, I've hit a lot of the stuff that I need in order to keep me riding strong and uh, with more confidence on the trail so uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this demo um, you know again practice your Turkish get-ups you know, each step, make sure that you're not rushing through it. That's probably the biggest piece of advice that I have for you is, you know, just know that each uh, position sets up your next movement and how well you move sets up your next position. So you want to make sure that you're really establishing each one of those seven steps and really mastering it and dominating it instead of just kind of rushing through the exercise because you're eventually going to hit a wall and you're not going to be able to get much stronger with this exercise until you go back and clean up uh, the bad movement or what your weakness really was. So, uh, so anyways, once again, it's been James Wilson with MTV Strength Training Systems. You can check me out on the web at bikejames.com. Find a bunch more videos and uh, other training advice and stuff like this. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this tip, and I will talk to you guys in my next one.